Hey folks, welcome to a walkthrough on how to build some basic stuff in your React Native app here, right? In the last video, we talked about React Native CLI, how to get our first native bare bones app up and running in our simulators. And I mentioned that you can still make API calls, set state, type things with TypeScript, and do all, all of our normal workflow we've been used to up until this point in the curriculum. I remember when I first started, I was very excited to learn how to code mobile app development, but I felt overwhelmed thinking something was completely different workflow-wise. But honestly, the logic will work pretty much the same. There'll be a lot of weird little nuances depending on you know your platform of iOS, Android, and you can do, um, you work with views and texts and scroll views and things like that instead of HTML components. So once you play around enough with the um, documentation on React Native and what all of the things kind of do, you can begin building a, just another tool belt to handle these problems. And it gets easier over time to style it, understand what's happening. I'm gonna do just a really very basic um, layout here for maybe attempting to talk to an API, fetch some data, set it to state, and then render it in our render return right here. That way we can see it pop up on our mobile device. Now from the last video, um, I turned off the Metro bundler and closed out my terminal and then restarted it again and noticed that it worked without the .tsx extension. So reading the GitHub issue a bit further, it said it just fails on the initial go through, but after that you should be pretty much set to go. So even though my um, app.tsx is not there like we had in the last video, turning it off and on again, the universal IT fix, it seems to be running just fine. Nice. So let's go ahead and start building some stuff out. I am going to delete these two properties on my style sheet right there. Um, we're gonna delete all that text. We're gonna leave the container and you'll notice that the flex one container means it takes up the entire screen here. So it should be just pure blue, nice. Good place to start. And we're gonna go ahead and leave justify content and line item center on there. We don't need this instructions anymore. Probably won't need this platform. We're gonna definitely need style sheet text and view. We're gonna keep it simple for this video. Uh, I'm gonna to go to a more traditional way of how I like to call these interfaces from these generics we need to type here I app state and I app props go ahead and get those ready uh, we'll have to pass those in just to give them more defined names you know make sure we don't accidentally call something props or state somewhere else in our program and potentially cause some conflict we would want to do that now would we let's go ahead and wire up my constructor here props we're gonna have to super props right there. We're gonna have to get our this.state object ready to go. Uh, and we'll need to type something on that state as well before I can start adding to it. But you're wondering what I'm probably gonna be doing. Let's do an async component did mount. That way we can do a try and catch here, or we're gonna be lazy and just do it and pray to God we don't mess up the catch or we don't generate an error for the catch to work. I have a test API I like to use when I'm messing around in new environments or libraries or testing code and helping students figure out problems. It's something called JSON placeholder at .typicode.com. So JSON placeholder .typicode.com. They have a test API you can use along with how to fetch some information. And we'll be using the very same process of fetch and then converting the response.json so we can use it in state. They have a couple endpoints you can test with. Um, I like to do this with students a lot in the curriculum, showing them how we can have like 500 cards on a screen using Bootstrap and React and things like that. But for this demo, we're gonna stick it to just the 10 users endpoint right here, which just has an ID property and a name property. Those will be the ones we're gonna care about and I'm not gonna give uh, too much care to the rest of it here. So all I need is the endpoint, which is this URL right here. And I need to know there's an ID and name property and its format is an array of objects, noise. So let's go ahead and prepare that. I know in my state, I'm going to have something called users, which is going to be an array of objects like that that will have an ID of a number and a name of a string. Strong, strong, evidently. There we go, name string. And we're gonna say users will be a blank array to start. There we go. We're gonna come down here and attempt to do our fetch. So I'm gonna say let res equal await fetch of this string. So once that promise resolves or rejects, hopefully it resolves, that way I, if I'm not running my try catch block, we don't run into some problems. And we're gonna say let users 
equal await res dot res dot json if I can learn to type and not fat finger enter on IntelliSense. Then we need to run a this dot set state where we set it to users. And we would do users colon users, but as you guys well know, having dealt with me and watching my videos, I like to do ES6 shorthand where where the key and the value are the same name, we can shorthand it down to just the single word. So instead of users colon users, I can just write users. Okay, and inside of our container here, let's do a this.state.users.map. We're gonna say each individual object in the array is a singular user. I'm going to do a set, instead of set of curly braces, I'm gonna do a set of parentheses for an implicit return where I will have a text tag of some kind, there we go. It's going to display the user.name property. And just like in React, we have to make sure we add a key prop to make sure we can identify these guys, there we go, via a unique key. And I know these IDs are unique on the user's response in this uh, API right here. Let's add some style while we're here. So let's say we'll have a new property called text style where the font size is going to be maybe like 15. Just taking a random guess here. We'll make it look better if we need to. And we'll have a margin of five, maybe a color of white. And let's just stick with that and see where we're at. And let's so add the style property here to our text native components. Style property is going to be the styles from the style sheet dot text style. Okay, cool. Uh, this is pretty much common stuff. And you, by this point in the curriculum, you've probably done this what feels like a hundred times and this logic will never really change. So I'm going to double tap R to refresh my application and the text might be a little small, but check it out. We have 10 usernames showing up in our application, right? We can maybe add a slightly larger text size. Let's bump it up to 20 or something like that, right? And this will just take time to figure out how sizing works in React Native. The more you play with it, the more of a feel you get for where you should be starting off with your sizes, right? Especially with UI kits making it much easier to scale. But there you go. I mean, this is a native app we could theoretically deploy to the Google Play Store right now. Uh, I don't think I'll get very many downloads or any money if I decided to price it, but it doesn't have a lot of functionality. So there's really not a point. So in the next series of lectures, we're going to be doing more deep dive into React Native, its workflow, UI kits, and maybe making a, an app from scratch that has some actual navigation between screens going on and things like that. So hope you all had fun getting this up and running here with me, and I'll see you all soon in the deep dive React Native videos.